This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Hi Clyde, it's good to see you. Back again at Talk to Asian Marketing. Out to eat again. Out to eat, so I tell you, my waistline, this Taiwanese lifestyle doesn't do anything for your waistline. So uh, we're here again, and we're with our series that we're doing on the Wamping Group. So last show we were looking at Wamping Steak, Wamping steak and that's the real high-end steakhouse where people, particularly business people, often go. And of course today now we're moving to the Taban Mu, which is an interesting format, taken quite a lot of influences from the Japanese setting. And, well, I think maybe we should just start by taking a look at the experience of dining there. And I know, Clyde, you've been there a few times recently. Perhaps you want yeah, to walk been there with the family. Yeah, we got some video, got some consumer cam, the family's visit there. And I went there after we'd been to Shanghai. Mm. And so I'd already had experience with one thing. And then we came to the Taban Wu and we checked that out. We had some coupons. They're giving out coupons to get people interested, to get some excitement going. We went in there, and the first thing you notice is uh, we had to wait. <laughs> we had to wait a long time. We did not have a reservation. Uh, my wife said, let's just go and check it out. And we went and checked it out. And there was a long line out front, and she thought this was quite outrageous. So she was not, just not in the mood to wait. Outrageous <laughs> that you have to wait at a restaurant in Taiwan. This just doesn't make yeah. sense, you know. And so, uh, yeah, we did have to wait a while. We went, we walked away. They did take our phone number, called us when they were ready on the mobile phone, and we came in. Yeah, nice, yeah. The first thing I noticed was they had quite different uniforms. I think the one thing, it was more kind of a kind of dark kind of suit. It was like a suit, wasn't it? That right. They were wearing like a formal kind of day uh, day suit. Exactly, exactly. More business-like kind of. And at Taban, they had these kind of purple Japanese-looking outfits. Now, they weren't not... They were not overly formal or restrictive or anything. They were kind of a loose kind of metaphor. I think that's the whole idea of the place, this kind of Japanese metaphor they have. So you go in and they sat us down. At the beginning, you walked in, they had a lot of running water going over these stones, very Japanese. It's very then, peaceful sort of feeling as exactly, you walk in. Exactly. Then lots of glass, mm-hmm. lots and lots of glass around. Then they would separate different eating areas. You maybe you'd have about six tables to one area separated by glass. But then the tables were pretty close in together. So that's one of the big differences right away is that at Wanping Steak they were far apart. Here they're much closer together. It's a much more sort of intimate setting from that point of view. Isn't well, it? it's intimate for the person you're with, but it's also intimate with the other people <laughs> next door, and we have a video of some of the people who are being intimate next door to us, and we were so close we got a very clear view of a couple out on a date. <laughs> See, she did it all over again. So I really got a feeling very quickly that mm. this is a somewhat high end, but not so high as to be out of the market for someone on a date, a young couple on a date, which we see in the consumer camp. Yes, you've got some real nice uh, shot there of uh, a couple that are clearly out, maybe first date, second date, and she's dressed up a little bit, looks very nice, and uh, he's obviously uh, looking to make an impression. And I think this is obviously the place he's chosen to do that. And it's a, a nice setting, and uh, they're clearly having a very nice, relaxed time. And um, clearly, uh, we also see that order process going on. I think uh, it looks yeah, like the, the staff came out. The staff came over, they gave us the menu. And again, it's the exact same situation. You choose your, your first course, your second course, and in this course you have three options, and this one you have three options, this one you have two options. And my wife had not done this before, and it threw her off a little bit. She said, can I, you know, is there a set menu, or do I have to choose each one? And they, they guided us very well, and the service was very good to say, no, you need to choose one here, choose one of the three, choose one of the two. That's the one. Yeah. No. 
You don't get it. That steakhouse, that's the one James was talking to the CEO all the time. One thing. The one. Super famous. Yeah, it's the same style. They make you think it's something special. Actually, it's not. Look at the things you would choose. You would only choose like one out of four things. It's McDonald's style, but they make you pay a lot more. And so you think it, you know, gives you the impression of something special. Actually, it's not. James all crazy about. It. He thinks it's great. I, I'm not impressed. We went ahead and did that. We all tried to get different things so we could try it out. So again, it was basically a similar menu, right? Similar course structure where you have a beginning appetizer and then a salad or whatever you chose, a soup maybe, and then your main course. Yes, I have to say that soup, the clear soup you had, it looked really appetizing. I like that. that. Yes, yeah. Mm. So then that, that came along and worked out very well. Everybody enjoyed it. We were having fun. Mm. I found that when my children were with me, because they had not gone to Shanghai, of course, I think it was the whole... Um, multiple course kind of experience yeah. that got them kind of involved. And I think that there's something about that. If a couple's out on a date and they're kind of getting this uh, course after course kind of service, it does make you feel like it's kind of exciting and interesting. I have to say, your daughter was really looking engaged every time. Yeah, every time, time came out, checking she was, it out. Yeah. She was looking at it and seeing what it looked like, seeing the presentation, checking your dish, your your wife's dish, her dish, and I, I think there was one point where she went for a little swap, I seem to remember. Well, we were trading things. We were trading the food around a lot and having some fun, and, and then the waitress would come over in her kind of pseudo kimono and mm -hmm. serve the next what, ne next course and, and so on. So we were having fun with that. That's really cool. but eh, it wasn't super impressive and, I, and nobody in the family thought it was really super impressive but it was something about the way it was all delivered that really got them involved yeah, so it's very engaging you think because the staff yeah. do come over they introduce each dish what it is so you know what it is and then if you need some instructions about how to prepare it cut it up what to do what's right. combined with what and they're very good on those details the introduction yeah, you could ask you know what was going on they would help you and I think that the contrast would be, uh, you know, I, this, again, it's, it sounds so unusual to be bringing this up as a point, but if you go to a, like we were in Hong Kong, we went to a really great local restaurant, just complete chaos inside. No oh, one's going to come to your table. table. Like, very, very right. much like we talked about before, big hall, fantastic food, right. lots of buzz, right. and crazy noise. No one's going to come to your table and, and, you know, each each time tell you, each 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 course say, hey, what's, what, do you know what this is? Let me tell you how to eat this. Let me tell you to enjoy this. They just throw it on your table and you're lucky you, you know, you get that. They're happy <laughs> and they tick it off and they're gone. Whereas, so this is, it's quite a difference in that sense totally, about totally what they're different. doing. And I think the, the details that they get into, not only with the service and the service introduction for each course, but also some of the little details. I think the one that uh, I think's often nice in the one pink steak mm -hmm. is where you have the ribs, for example. And with the ribs, they give you little pieces of metal 
so that you can uh, don't get your fingers so dirty when you're handling the ribs. Ah, I which is really nice. Yes, and they give you a little finger bowl as well so you can wash your fingers off. So these sort of details, I think people like, they appreciate. It's part of the whole essence of what they're searching to do, which is create that elegant, so sophisticated, consumer centric. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a exotic. Mm. You know, to us it doesn't seem. I, I think to me it's not. It's not ex, it's nothing exotic. There's nothing unusual about it. But to consumers that have not been exposed to that at all, it, it, it seems exotic. It seems and unusual. that's what's clever, I think, right. because it keeps pushing the boundary. I mean, the menu started off very narrow, very constrained, mm. just the original one ping steak dish. Oh, really? And then it's evolved now. You can have different types of steak. Yeah. You can have yeah. different dishes in there. So they're pushing the envelope mm. quite cleverly, extending it out, keeping interest. And I think in the Taiban Wu, they've obviously pulled in the service scape theme very, very strongly there. Yeah, lots of glass. Yeah. Um, no matter where you look, there was glass. Mm. So actually you could see the whole restaurant. Mm. But because the lights are dim, very, very dim, and the glass is somewhat tinted, so you could not see too far over. You couldn't really spy on too many, but you could see it was full. I did walk around, got some consumer cameras walking around. right out where you can see it. Right, yes, it, it lets people engage with something that's that's familiar, doesn't it? And I think the dishes as well speak to that strong Japanese metaphor. I mean, the, they have that squad of square design, the pottery, yeah, I think the, uh, the pottery, cups. the cups, a lot of things we're using this kind of metaphor. Yeah, They've done well there because, again, when we look often at localised settings, there's often a jumble of, of menu, of place settings uh, yeah. around the table. Whereas these have consistently come together to send one message, which is again something that's very noticeable. And it's like a theme, a theme restaurant, and I mean, you, there are certainly theme restaurants in, in Taiwan, but it, you know, it, it's unusual to be this Western theme and still execute some of the Eastern motifs. So I think it's that hybrid that really, really worked out really well. It sounds incredibly well, I think, in, in this situation. We had great service. We had a good time. It was. A little bit crowded, I have to say, and then we were pushed in a lot. So unlike one thing, you didn't have that space between tables, yeah, so. and it's a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit noisy. The waitress had a difficult time getting in between tables, and it was packed. Wow, that's really packed. So what night uh, did you go? Well, this was uh, lunchtime. No, it was night. I think it may have been a Friday night or even a Saturday night, which would explain why it's so busy. It's hard even during tough economic times. It's it's hard to find a restaurant on a Saturday night in Taiwan that's not crowded. Yeah, it's not busy. Hong Kong's the same. You just get so packed with people. Everybody loves to go out. So I think the experience overall was good. Again, we end up with the survey form at the end, asking for your input. They really, really encourage that. And... Um, we enjoyed it. It was fun. That's a that's fine. That's what it's about at the end of the day. I think their price point is probably just a little bit lower than uh, for the one one pink steak. But of course, the segment they're aiming for is again a little bit different. The one pink steak is really targeting, and you mentioned like the yeah. business suits. Right. Um, that slightly more formal look is targeting the, the the business audience. So often you see people taking clients there, business people, people they want to impress. Um, occasionally, of course, families do go as well, but that's slightly smaller segment. So, higher price segment, of course, the tavern were slightly less. So, within reach of someone who's got a job, they're working a little bit beyond the student group typically, but another segment they're yeah, I think really it's a, looking at. I think it's probably a younger group that they're looking at, maybe a 30 ish. Yes, someone who's into a career, so spending. A thousand a head or right. so is right. is not uncomfortable. 
I mean, it's not doable. I, I don't see, and the way the tables were laid out obviously was very dedicated towards couples. Yeah. And lots of, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one tables. Yes, and, and we see that. I mean, you've got a lovely, lovely uh, view there of a couple, obviously. Uh, as I say, the Ang Lee kind of uh, shot there. But the environment, too, speaks to something that's a little bit more modern, uh, of a feel, much lighter, brighter. Um, it was more. pretty dark, actually, though. You, yours was dark, but yeah, we went dark. to one in Tainan. But compared to the Wamping, they have much lighter colours. You mentioned the glass. Yeah, there. right. The glass, and the, the tables. Uniforms, right, definitely. And There's the not a uh, sense of uh, windows. I mean, we went to the yeah. earlier in the evening, so we right. still had a bit of light in there. So that feeling is a little bit more light and bright kind of uh, look to it. So yeah, I think in fact that's segment. one thing that's kind of stuck out in my mind because in all three locations, and next week we'll be going to Tasty, which is the other segment. Um, in all three, they did tend to have a um, lighting emphasis uh, on the dark side. Yes. And I don't, I, it didn't do a lot for me. You know, it made it hard for me to see my food a little bit. And then the one that Taliban we were at was definitely on the dark side. You can see some of the consumer cam definitely dark but mm. I think that has a lot to do with the segment it's working for especially at night that dating um, um, sort of mood lighting is it slightly yeah. more romantic I think again for this context that's also interesting because an awful lot of restaurants emphasize light and bright particularly when you're eating because people want to see they want to know the food they're getting the quality of it so they've sort of broken the mold a little bit with going well, totally kind different of than normal steakhouse, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Even a lot. Yeah, I mean, you have Japanese theme restaurants mm. left and right in Taiwan, mm. but um, usually they'll go the whole Japanese, mm. you know, the whole Monty. You know, mm. they'll have the uh, little bamboo sliding doors and the tables you squat down at and everything. They'll have the whole thing. So this is not that. No. It's the steakhouse throwing in a little bit of the motif that, again, people can relate to. And I think that's the key point. So you have a kind of foreign imported system, a foreign imported core product, mm -hmm. but then you emphasize some of the local metaphors and boom, you really get it. And you get something that connects up very, very, very well. How was the paying process? Smooth or...? Uh... Uh, oh, we'll have to see. I think I used credit cards, so that was very smooth, no problem at all. And they come over and they give you your napkins. They give you really detailed service. You know, they open up your napkin packages, hand them to you, yeah. pull it out. And I, I noticed you're doing with that with the both hands, and I've noticed that consistently as well. A very nice touch, you know, because of course that suggests respect. They do it carefully with both hands to give you a sense of feeling of respect that yeah. you're really the guest yeah. in their restaurant. <laughs> I mean, the, the workers there are, are, are well trained, and I think um, in our next episode where we go to Tasty, I had a chance to talk to some of the waitresses and see some of the details about who they are, where they come from, what's their situation, and how Wan Ping has kind of had a different approach than other restaurants. So that's next week. That's next week. So Tasty brings us to the third uh, experience with Wang Ping and we're looking forward to sharing that one with you. Okay, so next week we're off to eat steak again. That's it. Feeling hungry. <laughs> <laughs>